people are tired of politics. So Facebook is reducing political content. It's starting in Brazil, Indonesia, and Canada. It could come to the US. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. You should be using a VPN, like Surfshark, to protect yourself whenever you go online. Also, subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell on so you can be the first to watch our new episodes every week. And like our Facebook page. Speaking of Facebook, let's talk about politics. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know what you're thinking. Chris, I'm tired of all this political talk. Can you just shut up about it? Well, fear not. Facebook will depoliticize your newsfeed for you. Why bother ignoring us when Facebook can ignore our content for you? According to Facebook, they've temporarily reduced the distribution of political content in newsfeed for a small percentage of people in Canada, Brazil, and Indonesia, and the U.S. in the coming weeks. Not all political content will be reduced, of course. The CDC and the WHO are exempt. And so is content from official government agencies. But not from politicians or public officials or you. Gotta leave room to reduce content from, uh, certain folks. Actually, Trump is still banned on Facebook right now. But whether he will remain banned is up to Facebook's new oversight board. Now, Facebook said they weren't removing all political content. Their goal is to simply find a new balance of the content people want to see by experimenting with ways to limit the reach of political content in news feeds. CEO Mark Zuckerberg said that he wanted to turn down the temperature of political conversations because people don't want politics and fighting to take over their experience on Facebook. Of course, I'm glad Facebook is deciding for us what we want to see. That's why we all joined Facebook. Actually, I joined Facebook back in 2006 so I could finally poke all of my friends on the internet, and not just in real life. By the way, Facebook reducing political content is separate from the other big Facebook story going on right now involving Australia. You may have seen the news that Facebook has blocked news sharing in Australia. Unless you're in Australia and you rely on Facebook for all your news, then you probably didn't see that. But basically, Facebook is blocking Australians from sharing news links, and it's blocking everyone else in the world from seeing news from Australian media companies. That's in response to a proposed Australian law that would require tech companies like Google and Facebook to negotiate with media publishers and compensate them for content that appears on their sites. So just like everyone else in the world, Facebook doesn't want to pay for their news. And this is a situation where Facebook can't just open that paywalled news article in incognito mode. But while Facebook's fight with Australia isn't the same issue as their attempt to depoliticize the Facebook newsfeed, it runs into many of the same pitfalls. I'll explain a little bit later in the episode. But first, why is Facebook starting to reduce political content with these three countries, Canada, Brazil, and Indonesia? I'll get to that after the break. Welcome back. Why is Facebook censoring political content in Canada, Brazil, and Indonesia? The simple answer is fake news. But let's look a little deeper at what specific issues Facebook is censoring, sorry, depoliticizing in those countries before they start doing it here in the US. The issues are threefold. Love, death, and robots. Sorry, I meant coronavirus, race wars, and politics. That show's probably not going to make it on Netflix. Let's start by looking at Brazil, the coronavirus, and President Bolsonaro. 
Facebook has been going full Brazilian jiu-jitsu with coronavirus information thanks to this guy here. Facebook believes Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro has downplayed the coronavirus's effects, comparing it to a mild cold. But it also didn't help that he fired the Brazilian health minister last April due to public disagreements over how to respond to the coronavirus, such as social distancing. Facebook certainly didn't tolerate a president downplaying the coronavirus and distrusting the efficacy of coronavirus vaccines. Okay, that headline was a little unfair. He didn't say the Pfizer vaccine can turn people into crocodiles. He just said that if the vaccine turned you into a crocodile, Pfizer wouldn't take responsibility for it. They would just tell you after a while. Although speaking of vaccine efficacy, it turned out many months later that the Chinese vaccine that's being distributed in Brazil is only effective half the time. No word on whether it turns people into crocodiles. In any case, Bolsonaro seems okay with China's vaccine. But back to March of last year. Facebook and Instagram removed several posts showing President Bolsonaro walking around outside and not social distancing. Then in July, Facebook removed dozens of accounts linked to supporters or employees of Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro as part of an investigation into the spread of false news online. The reason why Facebook in Brazil is relevant to the U.S. is not just because of how Facebook wants to moderate news regarding the coronavirus. Facebook had put a global block on certain accounts controlled by supporters of Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro implicated in a fake news inquiry a day after it was fined for not complying with a Brazilian Supreme Court judge's order to do so. Facebook blocked accounts they accused of hate speech. Who knows what their metric is for hate speech. But they only blocked them in Brazil, and those accounts were still accessible to foreign IP addresses. However, the Supreme Court in Brazil wanted the accounts blocked globally, and Facebook did. So Facebook is willing to block Brazilian content globally because that government told them to. What happens if the Russian government tells them to? How often are Americans going to have their Facebook experience censored by foreign governments? Could this set a dangerous precedent that affects American access to certain accounts from abroad? Next, Indonesia, fake news and racial tensions. Facebook did a lot of censoring in Indonesia back in 2019 during the elections. There was a lot of fake news and memes that Americans wouldn't understand. This is Prabowo Subianto, the main opponent who lost to President Joko Widodo in the 2019 presidential race. Not a brony as far as I'm aware. The meme was because he didn't understand what a tech unicorn was. That's a tech startup valued at more than a billion dollars. One big concern ahead of the Indonesian election was how Prabowo would treat ethnic Chinese in Indonesia if he became president. This stems back to his involvement in the 1998 riots that targeted Chinese Indonesians. Facebook attempted to ease the political discourse in Indonesia, which touched on things like religion and race. Facebook was supposedly concerned with a rise in fake news in the months leading up to the election. So Facebook removed hundreds of Indonesian accounts, pages, and groups from its social network after discovering they were linked to an online group accused of spreading hate speech and fake news. But at what point does Facebook decide that a group accused of hate speech and fake news needs to be taken down? Especially when the removal of the accounts was due to coordinated deceptive behavior, not due to the content they had shared. And now, Canada, the fake Justin Trudeau sex scandal. In 2019, the US-based Buffalo Chronicle published this claiming that Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau tried to suppress an explosive sex scandal. It cited only unnamed sources and offered no proof. And ultimately, it appeared to be misinformation. But it still got passed around a lot. And Canada's laws couldn't stop it. 
Facebook's Canadian policy at the time said that misinformation does not violate their community standards. But there are cases in which true information intersects with other parts of our community standards and leads us to take content down. Which raises the question, if truth is not a criterion, what standards are? And who gets to decide? Facebook ultimately did not take down the posts about the Trudeau story, but did reduce their visibility following an AP fact check. Should Facebook have taken it down if it was false? Is the standard different because it slandered Trudeau during an election year? And is a post like that considered political? Lots of questions, but no good answers. Last month, Facebook called on the Canadian government to set rules for social media users. And if that happens, it would mean the power over what users can and can't see would be in the hands of big government instead of big tech, which I'm sure will satisfy everyone. Now, how does all this information affect Americans? I'll get to that after the break. Welcome back. Seeing how Facebook has acted and responded to issues in Brazil, Indonesia, and Canada gives us some context for how Facebook might handle political content in the U.S. Facebook's decisions involving other countries are already affecting content that American users see. For example, like I said earlier, Facebook's ban on Australian news doesn't just apply to Australian. It blocks posts from any Australian publisher from being seen anywhere in the world. And as other countries like Canada say they're looking to do the same as Australia, this problem is just going to get bigger. Meanwhile, even the issue of what counts as news has caused issues. In the initial ban, Facebook also blocked government and nonprofit websites including public health sites containing critical information about the pandemic during the first week of its coronavirus vaccine rollout. Facebook later apologized, but blamed it on the vague wording of the proposed Australian law. As a result, Facebook took down all content that would contain any news. So if Facebook can't even decide what counts as news, how are they going to decide what's political. Evan Greer, a director for the digital rights group Fight for the Future, says the decision about what is or isn't political is a very political decision in and of itself. Will they consider a local veterans group to be political? If so, will they not consider a local anti-war group to be political? Would they consider an LGBTQ support group to be political? Frankly, all of those things are political. This also brings up the issue of Facebook's story suppression, or as I should say, a reduction of story distributions, like what Facebook did with the New York Post's Hunter Biden expose, reducing the article's distribution until it was verified by a third-party fact checker. At the time, factcheck.org said there's no evidence Hunter Biden was being investigated, even though it turned out many weeks later, that Hunter Biden was under investigation. So what happens when Facebook relies on fact checkers, but the fact checkers are the ones spreading fake news? And that takes us to the ongoing debate of whether or not Facebook in the US is suppressing posts more so from the right than from the left. Babylon B, a right-leaning satire site, thinks so. It's obviously satire posts are constantly being fact-checked, like this one. CNN purchases industrial-sized washing machine to spin news. Yes, Snopes fact-checked it. And a story mocking Senator Hirano last year was briefly removed by Facebook, which Facebook later had to apologize for. This was the article which is a reference to a scene from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Babylon Bee CEO Seth Dillon said Facebook removed their post and demonetized them as punishment for allegedly inciting violence. 
And that wasn't just because the Facebook algorithm has a problem identifying satire. The removal and demonetization was upheld even after a manual review. This is starting to sound a little too familiar. What about left-leaning satire? Well, you don't see Facebook blocking the onion. Well, except that time Facebook blocked this ad for actual onions because their algorithm thought it was overtly sexual. I mean, those are some good-looking onions. So how much of Facebook's move towards reducing political content will be done by humans, and how much by algorithms? What are the criteria? And most importantly, will they block my campaign ads for Supreme Leader? And this episode has been sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN that lets you protect your identity when you go online. It helps you hide your IP address. Or if you're in, say, Australia, you can log into Facebook from the United States and actually see some news in your feed. And with Surfshark's camouflage mode, even your internet provider can't tell that you're using a VPN. That helps you stay private. Plus, Surfshark's clean web mode lets you browse the internet free from ads, trackers, and malware. So stay safe by using Surfshark. Try it out with our special deal that includes 83% off a two-year plan plus three extra months for free. Go to Surfshark.com uncovered. For just $2.21 a month, you can get Surfshark on all your devices. So click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.